أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قاف والقرآن المجيد بل عجبوا أن جاءهم منذر منهم فقال الكافرون هذا شيء عجيب Living the Quran through the Living Quran An audio-visual translation of Tafsir al-Nur of Sheikh Mohsin Karaati Translated by Salim Bimji and edited by Arif Huda. Audio version read out by the translator in this 16-part series, we will be reviewing chapter number 50, Surah Qaf. Part 2, verses 3 through to 5, The Resurrection. أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا ذَلِكَ رَجْعٌ بَعِيدٌ قَدْ عَلِمْنَا مَا تَنْقُصُ الْأَرْضُ مِنْهُمْ وَعِنْدَنَا كِتَابٌ حَفِيظٌ بَلْ كَذَّبُوا بِالْحَقِّ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ فَهُمْ فِي أَمْرٍ مَرِيجٍ Verse number 3 The disbelievers say to you, Muhammad, when we have died and our bones have become dust, you say we will be returned to life? That is an unlikely return. Verse 4 We, meaning Allah, know for certain whatever the earth corrodes of them to the minutest particle, and with us there is a book recording and preserving everything that humanity does. Verse 5 Rather, they, the unbelievers, denied the truth when it has come to them, and done so willfully and persistently, so they are in a dire state. Utterly confused. Commentary and thinking points. What was meant by the disbelievers when they said an unlikely return? Now, most likely this term refers to the fact that from the point of view of the intellect and habit, what they were accustomed to seeing around them, that is, they found it impossible that such a return from the dead could occur. The possibility of the return of a human being back to life based on their limited intellectual ability to fathom this and what they were accustomed to seeing around them was not possible to understand. But at the same time, they did not have any solid reason to deny the resurrection. They were merely being arrogant in their denial of it based on their own narrow understanding of the world. Now, the word which has been translated as dire state, marij, literally means confusion and bewilderment. Allah Azza wa Jal uses another word which comes from the same root letters in the Quran, regarding the mixing of the waters of the two seas. And this is seen in chapter 55, Surah Ar-Rahman, verse 19, where Allah says, He let flow forth the two large bodies of water. They meet together. In this verse, Allah Azza wa Jalla uses the same root word, which is maraja. However, the word in the verse under discussion has only been used once in the entire Quran in the form of an adjective, and this indicates a continued state of both astonishment and confusion of the disbelievers. Let us conclude with some takeaway messages from these few verses. Point number one. Paying attention to the resurrection and life after death is the focus of the warnings which the prophets of Allah were sent to deliver. Point number two. As believers, we must be ready and able to answer doctrinal questions and respond to any doubts which people may have. The bewilderment of the disbelievers at the time of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, was regarding this very issue. They were perplexed how a human body, which would decompose and eventually turn into dust and completely be disintegrated after death, could then be recreated and brought back to life. In response to this state of perplexity which the Arabs felt, the Quran says that Allah Azawajal knows for certain whatever the earth corrodes of them to the most minute particle, and He, God, will bring all the particles back together to form that human being. Point number three, all the material changes which occur in the universe are accounted for 
and under the supervision of Allah Azza wa Jal, nothing is left unaccounted for. Point number four, the earth has an erosive property associated to it which Allah Azza wa Jal has put into place. Point number five, the belief which Muslims have regarding the comprehensive knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal regarding each particle of the universe does not conflict with some verses of the Quran which point to everything being recorded in the proverbial book. Meaning that just because Allah Azza wa Jal knows everything, there is still no harm in him describing that everything which his creations do, say, or think is preserved in some form. Point 6. Allah Azza wa Jal completes the argument against the disbelievers to leave no room for any doubt. Point 7. The root of anxiety and confusion is the denial of truth and disbelief. Just as the root of peace of mind is focusing attentively on the teachings of the Quran, and remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Point number eight and the concluding point. Those who do not have firm faith continuously speak without taking the time to stop and listen to what is being said, and they are always in a state of anxiety. The Quran shows us that when Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, began to propagate the message of the Quran, the disbelievers used every opportunity to try and deviate the masses by calling the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him and his family, with a variety of derogatory names. They would refer to him as a sorcerer. Other times they called him a poet. At other times they would call him a madman. They would also accuse him of having learned the teachings that he was propagating from people of other faiths. Join us for our next session where we go over part 3 of this chapter as we review verses 6 through to 8 under the theme of proofs of God in creation.